We are here in the Amazon rainforest and right behind me you can see this is a collared peccary which is kind of similar to a pig in the sense that it's pig shaped but phylogenetically is a completely different animal. The reason why these guys look so much like pigs is a trend called convergent evolution where two species of completely different phylogenetic backgrounds have similar physiological and phenotypic traits for similar niches or adaptations in different habitats. These guys have evolved a lot of the same phenotypic traits as the pigs, but these are not in the same family. These are Pesuidae. Pesuidae is the family of New World pigs, also known as peccaries. Peccaries are found in their suborder Suina, alongside their only extant cousins, Old World pigs. This group is a part of the larger order of even-toed undulants called Artiodactyla. This group contains a myriad of iconic lineages of animals ranging from camels to whales. And peccaries are unique within this group because they break the rule of being entirely even-toed, having a third toe on their hind leg. My journey to document these animals in the wild has brought me to the Peruvian Amazon. I have enlisted the expertise of the research team here at Juan Nueva, a facility dedicated to the rehabilitation of displaced wildlife, teaching visitors about the Amazon, and aiding local communities. I had the pleasure of participating in a joint operation between the Amazon shelter and Juan Nueva, and was personally escorting two displaced peccaries, or Juanganas, deep into the jungle alongside the Las Piedras River. Do you see tamanduas out here much? Yeah. That's awesome. I see tamanduas not super often. That's a good tree. So we use game cams for studying wildlife populations, specifically felids and their prey. Um, something I've been doing for almost eight years now is studying jaguar populations. I'm now a little bit more focused on meso predators like the ocelot, Leopardus pardalis, and the margay, Wieti, which is actually a couple of the species that we have in captivity here that are in our rehabilitation program in, and they're going to be released to the wild. So we get to learn about these species via game trails and then also in person, which is really unique. Brought in those uh, white-lipped peccaries the other day. Are they somewhat rare? White-lipped pe peccary can be rare. They actually have very interesting migration patterns. So they'll be in an area and then disappear for years, but it's not because they're not in healthy status. It's just because they disappear and they'll, they'll come back. Um, it's one thing that we don't really know though. I think their status right now is listed as vulnerable, but actually it's the sahino, it's the collared peccary that are overhunted in these areas that really need a new like check of their status because they are definitely not doing as well as, as we think they are. So what's kind of like the rule of thumb? Where are you placing the game cam on the tree? Busting out the trail cameras, we set up surveillance around the jungle in hopes of documenting some peccaries. I'll be here in the Amazon with my team for another week filming our Peruvian episode for the upcoming show Serpentine. And hopefully, something will trigger the cameras while we're gone. Guys, we're picking up the first game cam. This is cam number two. This had a nice corridor running through the jungle, so hopefully we got some nice shots on it. Awesome, here we go. Yeah, we're just walking to the next game cam. It's right down here. Sam was saying that this is probably our best chance for the peccaries, and who knows, maybe even a tapir. That would be really sick. And so we got our third cam right here. Sam hand-picked this spot. This is actually an area where she walks her, uh, her cats that she's doing the rehabilitation program with. So hopefully, between the three of these cams, we'll have some collared peccaries and maybe some other animals here from the Amazon rainforest. I'm really stoked to see. After hard work and meticulous planning, Sam's cameras capture a glimpse at some wild collared peccaries. This is one of North America's most versatile mammals, ranging as far north as the Sonoran Desert and as far south as the Amazon. To get a better understanding of these animals in both extremes of their natural range, I'll leave the Amazon and fly to Arizona in search of these desert peccaries. With hope, I'll be lucky in capturing some footage to compare with the shots that we got the other day in the jungle. Okay guys, while I was hiking, I saw this cave right here and thought I'd check it out just because it's in the arroyo where I always see javelina. And sure enough, we have a bunch of signs of their presence here. First off is this entire place is just covered 
in uh, thick, bristly, coarse hair. Uh, and you can see it's black and white, the distinctive salt and pepper coloration of the colored peccary. We could find some javelina if we set up one of the game cams right outside of this cave. Ooh, it smells bad out here. Night falls on the desert, and this cave becomes an active rendezvous for animals traveling the arroyo after dark. The tail of a bobcat creeps through the frame briefly and then vanishes. Then, the bulbous, bristly rump of an animal comes into frame. The camera shakes playfully as a group of peccaries inspect the device. The peccaries rub their scent on the area, utilizing a gland located on their rump. This is just one of the particular adaptations the peccaries evolved long ago in the Oligocene. Other notable characteristics are their hairs, which can stand on end as a threat posture at a moment's notice, and their highly specialized canines, which sharpen themselves as they interlock. Despite being the same species, this animal's behaviors and diets differ considerably at the southern and northern end of their range. For example, in the Sonoran Desert, peccaries are crepuscular, meaning they are most active at dawn and dusk, when they can best avoid the extreme heat of the summer months. <laughs> the peccaries here are opportunistic and live on a diet that rotates with the seasons. But what is a consistent staple are the abundant cacti that populate the landscape. The moisture from the plants give the peccary a considerable amount of their necessary water intake, which is scarce for most of the year and they are able to withstand the sharp thorns thanks to an especially hardened root of their mouth, which is grooved to grind vegetable matter. At the other end of the spectrum, peccaries in the Amazon enjoy a canopy of trees that blocks the sun's heat and transverse the jungle throughout the day. The excess rain and humidity collect in mud pits referred to as culpas, and the peccaries make wallowing a daily routine to repel bugs and act as a cooling sunblock. Here, peccaries eat a wide array of wild roots, tubers, fruits, yams, and the occasional carrion. This concludes our analysis of collared peccaries in the wild. This journey has taken us across the Americas and has shown us just how versatile these little guys really are. None of this would have been possible without help from the incredible team at Oa Nueva. The work that Sam and her colleagues are accomplishing is imperative to the process of restoring and better appreciating our natural world. Please consider checking out Sam or Oa Nueva's Instagram, which I have linked 